Launching a ship, how hard can it be? Put it in the water, give it a name, and then smash a champagne bottle on it. Should be pretty easy, right? Well, there's plenty of occasions when somehow things just didn't quite go according to plan. From the bridge that got in the way to swaying ship that flooded a highway. Here's 15 ship launches that went horribly wrong. <sighs> Number 15. Luxury Cruise Liner Collides with Bridge in China China is building a lot of big stuff at the moment, and that includes cruise liners. This particular ship was named the Pearl No. 7 and set off on its sudden maiden voyage in Wenzhou east of China's Zhejiang province. The 530-foot-long ship is a massive seven stories high, and it was sailing along the Uzhang River, which flows under the Wenzhou Bridge. Only that seven stories was one story too many, and the ship's chimneys collided with the bridge. The impact damaged the chimneys and also left abrasions on the bridge, which was reported to have been swaying after the impact. Authorities launched an investigation into the damage and also into the case, ultimately blaming elevated river levels due to heavy rain in the previous days. But there is also an investigation into the height of the ship and its draught. The ship was not operating on its own power, instead being towed along the river by a tugboat as it made its way to a seaport where it was due to take onboard passengers for its first luxury cruise. Although there'll be a few hundred disappointed Chinese tourists now. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Ship Launch of Cement Carrier Norden at Royal Badu's Shipyard this big red ship is a pretty impressive looking vessel. In fact, it is a Dutch ship built in the Netherlands, a nation famous for its incredible navy and seagoing exploration of the past. Did you know that the Dutch were the first Europeans to sail all the way to Japan? This ship is not for exploration. We have satellites to do that job now, but it is a cement carrier. Here we can see the launch as workers remove the metal blocks holding the ship in place. Then its name is unveiled, Norden. And there's a smattering of polite applause. A big job has been completed and she's ready to go. Who knows how they used to do it in the olden days, but nowadays, a hydraulic system just kinda dumps the ship right into the water. And in this instance, it made the Norden sway pretty wildly from side to side. This created a wave which swept right up onto the road and went into the fields nearby, almost getting some of the ship's spotters' feet wet who were standing nearby. I guess that's how they keep the roads clean in Holland. Number 13. Ship Accident During Launching now we've seen the Chinese and the Dutch screw up, we're going to switch over to the good old US of A, where we'll show these upstarts how it's done properly. Or not. In New Orleans, the US Coast Guard launched their first new icebreaker in 20 years on November 15th, 1997. But not everything went according to plan. This icebreaker is what's known as a heavy icebreaker, and in 2021 is the US's only ship of this type. After being christened as the USGC Healy, the ship was tipped into the water And this heavy ship might have been a little too heavy, as it kicked up water and debris, which ended up injuring 20 people on the viewing platforms nearby. Bones were broken and others suffered cuts and bruises, as the ship created a much bigger wave than had been anticipated, throwing up a huge wave of that especially muddy New Orleans water, along with some other objects. Next time, put the viewing platform a little further back. Number 12. Panama Canal Ship Accident The Panama Canal was one of the most incredible construction projects ever undertaken by humanity, and since it opened in 1914, it has been one of the busiest shipping spots in the world, allowing ships to cut out a huge and extremely perilous detour around South America. This canal changed the face of crossing the oceans forever. The Spanish made the first survey of the area for a proposed canal in 1534, but the work was never attempted. 
Finally, the region fell into French hands, who began work in 1881, with the U.S. taking over the job in 1904 and completing the canal ten years later. Since then, many ships have been launched there. And hopefully most of them were more successful than this one. On each side of the ship are tow trains, which help to guide it through the narrow canal lock. Only someone clearly screwed something up, and the massive ship ends up getting a little too close to one of the trains, ending up crushing it. The train, also known as a mule, ended up in pretty bad shape after going head-to-head -head with this massive container ship. Number 11. Acacia Kill Canal Lock Gate Crash as you can see here, this ship has ended up smashed right over the lock gate. And you'd be right in thinking that this is not where it's supposed to be. The lock gate seems to have come off pretty badly, and it looks like it may need some serious repairs. The container ship Acacia had this accident on the Kiel Canal in Germany, which is a 61-mile-long freshwater canal in the German state of Schleswig-Holstein. It's a pretty useful canal, which cuts out the need to sail all the way around Denmark, which has some pretty choppy waters at times. On June 20th, 1895, Kaiser Wilhelm officially opened the canal, an event which was captured by the British director, Bert Akers. The first ship through was a Sunderland-built wooden bark named Lily. And by all accounts, things went a lot more smoothly than it did when the Acacia tried to make its way through. The canal was famous for a while in 1936, when Adolf Hitler closed it to international shipping, which threatened the British economy and was one of the steps which led Britain declaring war on Germany in 1939. Number 10. Ship Flips Over in this clip, we can see a different approach to landing a ship. Some smartass decided it would be better to use a vehicle with a crane to winch up the boat, then swivel around before placing it nice and gently on the water. Somebody clearly got their figures wrong, as this boat is clearly way too heavy for the crane, and that becomes pretty apparent as the whole thing begins to tip and then fall into the water. The idea was that the boat would end up in the water, but this one brought the whole crane along with it too. That's not quite what the original plan was, as you can see. The crane ended up flipped right over on its side, and the boat seems to be looking at it as if to say, oops. I'm pretty sure the driver of the crane was feeling a little uncomfortable hanging upside down and almost being dragged into the water. Next time, they ought to try out this technique with a rubber dinghy first, just to make sure. Number 9. Symphony Provider in the town of Lier in Germany, a pretty huge ship called Symphony Provider was being launched. This general cargo ship is actually registered to the Netherlands. It is a pretty hefty vessel with a tonnage of 6,740 built in 2017. The launch is looking like it was all going to plan, but then something isn't quite right. The part where the big ship is supposed to, you know, go in the water. Yeah, that's the part that didn't happen. It seems the ship got stuck at the bow on the shipway, which meant the shipway wasn't slipping. Did they put enough WD-40 on it? But then finally, someone took care of the problem, and the friction overload was resolved, and the ship finally made its way down to where it belongs, the water. Lear is a town which plays home to many German shipping companies, and 20% of the German merchant fleet is registered to the port. People have been living here since at least 3200 BC, and it's known to be a pretty nice town, since it managed to avoid being the target of Allied bombing in the Second World War, in spite of being an important shipping place. Number 8. KM Wehen Sagittara out to Indonesia now, we are going to take a look at the passenger ferry KM Wehen Sagittara. This ferry sank dramatically at Lemong Bay, with hundreds of passengers and vehicles aboard. A few hundred yards from the launch site, water began to pour into the ship, and the captain made the decision to try and turn around and return to port before things got too bad. 
but the ship began listing severely to the starboard side and then began sinking. Authorities dispatched several rescue vessels, and a search and rescue operation was launched. This operation successfully pulled more than 100 people from the water. Although 16 were immediately transferred to a nearby hospital with life-threatening injuries. As the rescue continued, rescuers had no idea how many passengers were aboard the ship, so confusion began to threaten the lives of many. Currently, the ship had tilted back and partially sank, but we are afraid that might have some people inside the wreck, said the head of public relations of Terminal Among Bay, Rika Yusamara, at the time. Number 7. Ship Launch Goes Horribly Wrong from there, we skip over to this video, which is from the news network CBS. Right off the bat, things look pretty much normal. We've got a ship in the video, and that's generally a great start to any ship launch. Because, you know, if there's one thing that's really gonna ruin a ship launch, it's not having a ship. Then you just have a launch, and you just know some smartass is eventually gonna start asking awkward questions about what is it you are launching and if the booze is free here. It's not just any old ship, but a pretty big one. It's ready for its first dip in the water, just like a big baby duck made of metal and stuff. Anyway, the ropes are attached, and we are just about ready for our ship to launch, so the machines or strong dudes on the other end of the ropes start giving the thing a big pull, and it slides down into the water and, uh, uh-oh, that's... That's gone in a little too heavy, causing a huge and powerful surge of water to obliterate the wooden fences at the dock edge, which then hit people in the crowd, including the guy filming. Number 6. Scott Explorer Here we are at the launch of the ship Scott Explorer in the Netherlands once again back on October 11th, 2019. This is the Royal Radu shipyard in Hugesund, and it seems like the Dutch are a little slack sometimes when it comes to ship launches, given how many we found that went horribly wrong. That said, some more slack is exactly what they could have done with during this incident. First up, we see the dock workers doing the kinda dangerous looking job of hammering the supports out from under a massive ship. You sure wouldn't want that to slip off and fall on ya, but hey, it's not like anything could possibly go wrong, right? Anyway, we see the nice, shiny red hull looking all clean and scratch-free, and not covered in barnacles, which, by the way, is the reason ship's hulls are red. The copper in the red paint is a barnacle deterrent. The first sign things aren't going well is that it starts raining. You just know it's gonna be a long day. The ship goes in, but drama! One of the ropes at the stern snaps, and the ship is heading to the far wall where it gets a big prang from the wall, scuffing up all that nice red paint job. Number 5. 10 Million Yacht Sinks at Launch Ah, the super rich, cruising around the world in their diamond-plated mega yachts. An easy life, you might think, but what if your $10 million yacht doesn't even make it into the water at its launch? How are you going to race Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos across the Caribbean Sea then? You'll just have to stay home and play with your helicopter collection, I guess. Anyway, that's what happened when this 90-foot yacht, named Baden, when it was launched in the Washington state. For 10 million, you want the boat to be standing upright at least. The yacht builder's New World yachts were like, it's your launch equipment, not us to blame. Then they laid off 52 staff and went out of business. The bad news was that there were six people on the yacht when it was launched, but all were rescued without any serious injury to anyone. The physical evidence on and adjacent to the launch ramp suggests that the dolly carrying the weight of the port stern of the yacht may have suddenly dropped off the edge of the boat ramp during the launch, causing the vessel to experience a sudden list to port from which it could not recover in its light condition for launch said the company in a press release. Number 4. This NYC Ferry Crash 
Back on October 15, 2003, a fairy named the MV Andrew J. Barbary, by the way, isn't naming boats after a person's full name kinda weird, was heading up towards Staten Island, filled up with commuters from Manhattan. When a ship is heading towards some land, the best thing to do is to make the ship go slower, but this one didn't do that. It kept on keeping on right into the pier. The assistant pilot had fallen asleep, and the ship's master wasn't paying attention, so the ferry hit the pier in a pretty dramatic way. With 6,000 people on board, it was bound to have some serious injuries, and unfortunately, 11 people were killed that day as the passenger deck was sliced into by the pier. Andrew J. Barbary was named after the longtime coach of Curtis High School's football team, who had died shortly before the ship was commissioned. I don't know if he was a lucky coach, but his boat seems to have had a lot of bad luck. It crashed again in 2010, once more causing many injuries, although fortunately no death. Number 3. Russian cargo ship crashes into bridge in South Korea. Well, now we're out in Russia, and a cargo ship captain who had been enjoying his navy rum a little too enthusiastically ended up crashing a ship into a bridge in South Korea. Near to the port of Busan, the ship hit a major highway bridge and caused a pretty huge incident, especially as it happened right around South Korean rush hour, meaning the whole city was jammed with traffic until things could be sorted out. The vessel was damaged, and so was the bridge, which had a hole torn in its steel structure. The 370-foot ship, called Sea Grand, had arrived in the town the day before. And it seems like the state of this captain was a great advert for the quality of Busan's nightlife because the captain was in a pretty rough state by the time the ship set out for its native port of Vladivostok the following morning. With a cargo of nearly 3 million pounds of steel coil on board, the ship took a wrong turn and found itself heading right for the bridge. And with all that cargo, there was not much anyone could do to stop it. Number 2. Cruise ship crashes into dock and tourist boat in Venice. Once upon a time, the city of Venice was known to the world for being kind of devoid of culture and just basically a pretty drab place. Then someone invented the cruise ship and filled all of Venice's tiny canals with these massive monsters. And now the city is a thousand times better than ever before. And who doesn't love a never ending army of day trippers? Then they leave their empty food containers everywhere as a sign of thanks to their Venetian hosts for allowing them to come and improve their city. Oh, wait a minute. No, cruise ships are the worst, and here's another reason why. They crash into stuff all the time and destroy things like other small boats. It rammed its way into the dock with its horns blaring and ended up injuring five tourists, which is kind of cosmic irony. An investigation was launched into why a massive 13 deck ship managed to crash into the tiny waterways of Venice. If you're a genius and you need a job, think about hitting them up for some consultancy work, figuring out how this all happened. Number 1. Brazil Bridge Collapses After Ship Collision Ships are big and when they collide with stuff, they damage stuff. That's what happened here in Brazil when a ship crashed into a bridge pillar, pretty much completely destroying it, and dramatically causing two cars to fall into the water, according to witness reports. The five crew members were reported to be unhurt, but other injuries or fatalities are unknown, as scuba teams were deployed to search the river. The governor of the state of Pera, where the incident occurred, was forced to sign a state of emergency to deal with the incident. Our priority is searching for victims and giving complete support to their families. He told state media, Pera is the Amazon region of Brazil and contains one of the country's busiest ports, Belém. There had been reports that the pillar on the bridge was seriously corroded, but that governors had failed to produce the funds needed to carry out the repairs. And, well, now there's a pretty big mess to sort out that's going to cost a whole lot more. When you factor in the lost trade from all the delays, have you ever seen a ship launch that went horribly wrong? What was your favorite story on our list today? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!